All right. So, Colorless Eldrazi versus Ad Nauseam should be an interesting kind of dynamic for both of these players, knowing that it's going to be potentially a challenging one for the Eldrazi player, unless he is able to get quickly out of the gate and be able to utilize things like Thought Not Seer and stuff like that, while our Ad Nauseam player is really going to be hoping that he can be able to get not just a quick kill, right, get there before there's too much pressure, but really relying on that Phyrexian Unlife as a way to kind of keep him alive, All right? Being able to say, hey, you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. Once you get to zero or below zero, you just have to start taking poison damage, right? Infect damage. So we'll see how it works out for Keenan and Leighton now. Both these players have made it into the top eight previously, so they're used to competing against each other. Keenan has been rotating around between a couple of different decks over the last couple of years. He's been enjoying piloting that ad nauseum lately. Same thing for Leighton, though. We saw him, I believe, last week. He was playing Control. This time he's back on his tried and true Eldrazi, and he likes to rotate again and just like, oh, I'm back, back to Eldrazi. It's fun. I can't, can't stay away. Well, roll off. Seems like Leighton was able to get there. And we'll be getting things going with round two. Now, one of the things we often talk about is those first couple lands that are played and how it gives indication of what you're playing against, right? The Eldrazi Temple is like, okay, you're either playing some sort of Eldrazi variant or you're on Tron Eldrazi. Not many people play Tron Eldrazi anymore, so that's a pretty nice way to go about it, though. Um, and he says, here's a Simeon Spirit Guide. Let's get that Thought Nuts here out immediately. Ooh. Okay, so we've talked about this before, but ad nauseum, some lists do have the ability to have that kind of hard lock, if you will. Um, and that is something that Keenan does enjoy having in it. So you have that Frexian Unlife, and Um, what is the name of that card? Solemnity, however you pronounce that word. Uh, three costs from Hour of Devastation. Players can't gain counters. Counters can be put on artifact, creatures, enchantments, or lands. Yeah, but like I was saying is those initial first turns with um, how you play your lands, what spells the players are playing is the kind of way that you need to start to realize what you're playing against. When they're playing the blue-white scry land like this, it's going to be ad nauseum. Right? Okay. We'll get some more scrying going. I like the scry lands a lot. I think they were fun. I've been missing some damage, and I apologize, guys. We're going to say he's at least at 16. Uh, let's take 13 points of damage. Go to 3. And Keenan's going to try to go off here. Can he do it? Let's try to dig. He says, I'm going to cast this Serum Vision. He essentially has two turns, right? The way it's set up is 
he has that angel's grace that he could be able to use next turn to prevent himself from dying. But he's really kind of got to get into an ad nauseum here. And he'll pass. Slayton's probably feeling pretty good about how the curve has gone on these first couple of turns. And he says, bam, I'm going to prevent myself from losing. I mean, really just the slight sequencing, you know, I don't know how many creatures Leighton was going to attack with, but um, Keenan was ready out the gate just like, no, nope, I'm going to to say I'm not dying yet and I gotta hope that I can draw into something and he does not so the power of Eldrazi takes down Ad Nauseam in game number one here and sometimes that's how the colorless Eldrazi just does it if you were around in Eldrazi winter a couple of years ago you should be familiar with how gross of a turn that was at least those couple of turns. And really those kind of chained together thought knots back to back, uh, stripping away Keenan's chances of trying to kind of survive a couple extra turns. Um, so it definitely challenging um, when you're like, I'm playing this combo deck and I have you know, some of the pieces I need, I just need to be able to get that ad nauseum, right? Or spoils of the vault or whatever you need to try to find that. And Keenan not able to put that together, and so kind of now moving into those sideboard stages here. So Keenan does have access to some more cards, like he does run some of the packs, I believe, in his board, some also main board. Um, Lab Maniac, I believe he has it just in his main. He might put it inside, I'm not sure how his, his list is, is written out. Um, Echoing Truth, maybe he wants something like that. I'm not really sure how he's going about his list. Alright, getting things going for game number two. Oh my gosh. So, BBD just um, previewed a new card 
on Twitter called Kaya's Guile, which is a pretty awesome card. All right, so uh, real quick, though, uh, what's going on on screen right now? Serum Powder allows uh, Layton to do some mulliganing and keep the same number of cards that he's mulliganing from. So if he has a seven-card hand, he has that Serum Powder in his opener, exile all the cards in your hand, and you get to mulligan down to seven, essentially. But back to this Kaya's Guile card, which is a uh, pretty sweet of a card. It's a three cost instant spell that is costing colorless, white, and a black. And you get to choose two. And just like all of your favorite command style spells out there. But it's set up that each opponent sacks a creature. Or you can exile all cards from each opponent's graveyard. Or you can create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. Or you can gain four life. Now, if you wanted to, you could pay six mana and do all of those. Otherwise, you just do two. I like this card a lot. I think it is super sweet. Very, very flavorful. All right, let's get it going. <laughs> Jeez, look at this pile of exiled cards here. He says, now that I'm done, I start with a free land in addition to having all these cards in my exile pile. Hope that's okay with you. Suspended Lotus Bloom. Dampening Sphere. That's pretty nice. Oh, does he use it now? Looks like, yeah, let's path to negate that. On my turn, I'm going to catch this Angel's Grace so I can't lose. So the Dampening Sphere really would shut down Keenan, right? He's like, I need to have the exact amount of mana to cast these specific spells in this specific order in order for me to kind of go off and get you. When I can't do that, then it's going to be very hard for me to win. So we have to fight initially over that dampening sphere. Let's see what you're hiding. He says, you can take one of these two ramp-related spells. What would you like? Pendant Prism it is. Good choice. Another Pact of Negation drawn here. So Keenan now needs both of his combo pieces, essentially. Right? He's sitting in this sort of wait-and-see stage. But Layton's going to push for damage. He says, here's seven coming across. Oop, not 17. He took seven, went to 13. Uh, so you see him use that Simeon to help cast that Eternal Scourge from Exile. land and angel's grace so we want that angel's grace because that's again one step closer to the combo we need um, there's a card in his hand that I don't even know what that is I'm not sure what card that is cost five it looked like I have been seeing some people run um, Grave Titan in their board. Um, I don't know what that card is. Sorry, guys. If I had a copy of his list, I would definitely let you all know.
Hmm. Now I'm at a loss. Seeming spirit guide here, though, to kind of help out. Dismember this guy. Pact and negate it. What else are we casting? Another Scourge? Yep. Here's the Angel's Race so I don't lose. I'm assuming it is probably like flying and lifelink and things like that, but I just don't know what this blue white card is. Alright, so, here's the thing. I am all off on life totals and everything else for this match because I don't know what card Keenan is playing, but I'm assuming that it's relevant to our life in the sense that he's got nine points of damage coming across every turn. In that case, he had six, but... This flying lifelinker... I don't know, maybe he's a... Uh, Three, four, four, four. I don't know enough details about him to tell y'all, which I apologize for. All right, let's scoop it up. Whatever that cyborg card was, it was too much for Layton to deal with. And we're going to game number three. Oh, thank you, Leftfield. Thank you, pur Purple Jeremy there. Godhead of Awe card. Spirit Avatar 4-4 flying. Other creatures have a bait. Ah, that is pretty sweet. All creatures are 1-1. One, one. So when he was taking 3, he wasn't really taking 3. Hmm. Okay. You're driving right now. That's right. <laughs> I appreciate you helping me out at least with that. Because I was like, I have never seen this card in my life. But at least... You and Letfield got me on lock, helping me out with these tricky cards like that. So, Kenny does have some spicy sideboard cards that he's been able to bring in. It's super funny against Death Shadow. Yeah, that's pretty silly.
All right, let's get it going, guys. Chalice on one here. I'm looking to have no fun, he says. Uh, what is the lay on these? Is this last Tuesday or this is last Tuesday? We are all caught up. This is week number four. So all VODs from this season are currently up on YouTube or on the VOD section of, of Twitch. So the challenge on one is tough. Actually, let me adjust our life totals because he's not at 13. He's at 17. Now he's down even lower because it's like 6. Go to 11. So the challenge on one shuts off Angel's Grace. It shuts off things like Serum Visions and Sleight of Hands and things like that. So he can't be able to draw into maybe a combo piece. He's also kind of stuck trying to make something work um hey everybody's won one again <laughs> our godhead of awe is back only to be killed here's six more Ugh! strip away a card from your hand Two Angels Grace and a Path, Simeon Spirit Guide, Ad Nauseum. Ugh. Pact of Negation. Gross. Pass turn. Guess it's time to die. Let's try to cast this. <laughs> and it's like, yep, I'll counter it. And there's the hand. So, ooh. Nobody likes Chalice. Why does that card still exist? <laughs> now Chalice of the Void, very powerful card, and even in a deck like that where you're like, okay, there's other ways for it to be able to combo off and still be able to live, right? It does have the enchantments available, like Phyrexiana Unlife and things like that. Didn't work out there, so we'll have to see, though, going into uh, next round how it works out uh, since we've got two more to go, guys.